Now, for the viewers and fight fans in attendance around the world, and the millions of future subscribers across all my social media platforms, welcome to Tough Glove Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it! What's good, everybody? I'm locked in. Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. Go ahead and hit that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button for me, and we're going to jump right into the content. So, this past Saturday night, author Better Beef put the absolute beat down on Joe Smith Jr. I had actually picked Joe Smith Jr. to win that fight. I thought he would bring him to get him past a certain amount of rounds and take advantage um, as he slowed down. But I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to, as far as the light heavyweight division goes, the only person that could even give Arthur Better Beef a challenge, to, in my opinion, no disrespect to Anthony Yard, but the only person that can give Arthur Better Beave a challenge is Dimitri Bivol. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. Yes, Anthony Yard is a great fighter, right? Joe Smith Jr., I would like to see him fight Joe Smith Jr. actually before he fights Better Beave. I think that would be actually best for him. And then let Better Beave fight Dimitri Bivol for Undisputed. Here's why. Um, so, right now, Arthur Better Beef is 18 wins, uh, 18 knockouts, 100% knockout ratio. Record is still unfazed. He is 37 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? And let this serve as an example about all of that. You and your prime, and he's not in his prime. As long as you training and you're taking care of your body and doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, you can extend that prime uh, window. You know, you can extend the window from what you and your prime. Now, I had no idea Joe Smith Jr. was going to come out the way he did. I actually thought he was going to put together a game plan. It. This is what I'm going to tell you it looked like to me happen. Better be, I told you in a, my prediction video, that he hits very hard, just naturally. Anything he throws is going to hurt. And I think in a few couple minutes, the first couple minutes of the first round, Joe Smith Jr., even through his guard, felt the power that he was going to have to deal with. He sold out way too early. Then when he got caught, I don't think he completely recovered from the first knockdown because if you look at the way he was throwing his punches, he was pressing, pressing the action, right? But... His punches were not landing. I think he landed maybe one right hand that didn't even really move Better Beef. And then, to be honest with you, Better Beef didn't give him another opportunity to give him another right hand in because he got on his bicycle and circled out. He was coming. You know, that's what shocked me about Better Beef. I had no idea he was as good a boxer as he is. And that was just due to ignorance, right? Joe Smith Jr., I rock with him because he's American. I want to rock with the American. But when you break down, see, amateur records mean a lot because it means you get a, a big experience. You get a lot of experience and a lot of different fighting styles. And the way, what shocked me was when Arthur Better Beef came out, his footwork, I didn't realize he even had any footwork. I didn't realize Arthur Better Beef had any footwork. But he showed that he has some damn good footwork. He shows that he has a high ring IQ because he was setting up the shots that were hurting Joe Smith. Whereas Joe Smith Jr. just looked like he was going to go in there kind of Mexican style and just go into a slugfest. Which is absolutely the worst game plan you could have against somebody like off the better beef. So yes, where Joe Smith Jr., has at least 10, 11 more fights under his belt, probably more, right? So you would say he has more pro experience. If you add up the amateur experience that Better Beef have, I think he has like 96 fights and 10 losses. That experience alone helps him in the professional uh, title fights that he's been in. This man 
had good foot movement, number one, great punch placement. He was sharp as a tack. Joe Smith, I don't he wasn't connecting. And let me tell you, it became obvious that Joe Smith was gonna get knocked out the first round. Even before the knockdown, it was obvious to me that Joe Smith felt that power because he completely sold out after that. He didn't try to box him. I mean, he used his jab, but it wasn't even he didn't even use his jab in an educated manner. You know? And so, you know, Arthur Better be walked right through him. You know, Dimitri Bivol boxed Joe Smith Jr.'s head off. Right? He did that. That's what Bivol does. Um, now, Anthony Yarde, the reason why he's a fantastic fighter, by the way. And I say Yarde, but it's Yarde. The reason why I don't think Anthony Yard is going to beat Better Beef is just due to the what I saw in the Joe Smith Jr. fight. Now, I'm not taking nothing from Anthony Yard, okay? He's a, he's a terrific fighter. I really like him. I like his personality and everything. But when you look at their fights and you put their styles together, especially the way Arthur Better Beef performed against Joe Smith Jr., his footwork was good. He had defense, right? He was setting up his shots, right? He was like, it was like a chess player. He was like two moves ahead. Like he knew what Joe Smith Jr. was going to do. So that showed me that he has a very high ring IQ. And number one, his punch placement was beautiful. And his punches were sharp and hard. It didn't even look like he was sitting down on his punches, it didn't even look like he was sitting down on his punches. And I think Yard is going to have to box him. Yard is going to give him some problems. But I think once he figures Yard out, you know, he's going to press him. And if Yard can't get his respect very early in the fight, if Yard doesn't hit him with a punch that says, wow, okay, I think I might have to box this one out. He's going to get ran over as well. It's going to be, and Yard likes to fight. So I don't know how long he's going to do that boxing stuff before he, he comes and starts applying his own pressure. Now, Yard is defensively responsible. I'll give him that. But when you have a man that can hurt you through your guard, that's intimidating. And I'm curious to see how Yard is going to deal with that. Now, I keep saying Yard because I feel like that's the next fight we're going to get. Bivol is, I believe, with uh, Eddie Hearn. And top rank don't really do any type of business with Eddie Hearn. Plus, uh, the Yard and uh, Arthur Better B fight makes more sense money-wise for the promoter. Okay? Though the best fight, the most exciting fight that everybody wants to see now is they want to see the light heavyweight uh, division undisputed. They want to have their undisputed champion. And I know right now Arthur Better Beef has three of the belts, but I don't think he's going to just be able to do to Dimitri Bivol. And I'm not talking about what Dimitri Bivol did to Canelo. Forget about that. I just don't think he's going to be able to do to Dimitri Bivol what he did to most of his, op his opponents because Bivol has a very high ring IQ and he's a very good boxer and he has fantastic footwork. It's going to be very hard for Better Be to land cleanly, consistently. But with that said, with that said, I can't even predict who's going to win that fight because they're both undefeated and they both have two very different styles. If they can, the one who can apply their game plan the best is the one that's going to win between Arthur Better Be and Dimitri Bivol. Who you guys think wins that fight? Now, I'm going to go ahead and give off the better beef. You know, I'm going to predict that he beats Yard. I, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be exciting. But I really think that I don't think Yard is going to be able to have the experience that it's going to take to beat somebody like better beef. That's just my opinion. The, uh, this man right here, <clears throat> he's a beast. An absolute beast. And the thing that shocked me is I knew he was strong. I knew he was durable. I really didn't expect him. When he came out, he started off with his foot, footwork. And that was the first thing that threw me for a loop. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not used to seeing that. So he was expecting Joe Smith to come forward. He set Joe Smith Jr. up brilliantly. Brilliantly. 
and made that fight look so easy. You know, shout out to the common man for shooting for greatness. But at this point, and, and don't get me wrong. Listen, Joe Smith Jr. is still a good fighter, okay? He has 28 uh, victories, 22 by way of knockout, right? And four uh, losses. And he's been knocked out twice. Now, with that said, I don't want to see him completely disappear from the sport. I mean, it's, it's already been proven that he can't compete at the elite level in that division. But what he will make is a very good gatekeeper. He will make a very good test for the fighters that want to get to that elite level. And I would like to see his career uh, go a little longer. You know, how you guys feel about it? Do you think Joe Smith Jr. should retire? Do you think that he can even come back mentally from this destruction that he just faced, this defeat that he just faced? Do you think that he can come back mentally from that in order to be effective in the boxing game at the light heavyweight division? That's one, okay? So now that we got that out the way, shout outs to Arthur Betterbeef. He is unified. Uh, he now holds the IBF, uh, the WBA, and the WBC. No, he has the WBO, the IBF, and the WBC, okay? Dimitri Bivol has the WBA title, right? And uh, Anthony Yard is the mandatory. So if they honor that, you know, that would just be more fodder. For Arthur Better Beef to, uh, I guess, you know, pad his resume. Now, I don't mean to say it like that, like I said, because I really do like Yard. Anything is possible in the sport of boxing. But after what I saw this past weekend, not just the power, right? That's a big factor. But with just the ability to walk Joe Smith Jr. into these punches and set him up the way he did, uh, you know, Anthony Yard is going to have to be the best he's ever been, you know, in order to be Arthur Better Beef. Uh, better beef. Anyway, let me know how y'all feel about that. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you see, we also had uh, Devin Haney as well as George Cambosos on the screen because George Cambosos Jr. has activated his rematch. And I'm not surprised. I know a lot of people saying they don't want to see the rematch, but like I said in the last video, you know, the man wants that last paycheck and he should have it. It was a contractual agreement. Now, they did state that they're not going to be able to sell out the same size arena or anything like that. So they'll get a smaller venue. I think George Ferocious Cambosos Jr. should be the bigger man and let, you know, let the rematch happen in America. But I doubt that's going to happen. So Devin Haney is going to have to whoop on him again uh, in a rematch and... I don't see anything he can do differently. The only reason why I say that is because even if he changes up his game plan, he fights how he fights. The same way you saw him in the last fight with Devin Haney is the same way you saw him with Teofimo Lopez in his previous fights. Now, with that said, like I said before, Devin Haney didn't even expose all of his weapons. In that first fight, he just did what was needed to become undisputed. So I think that if Ferocious George Cambosos Jr. comes in and thinks that he's going to just press harder, he's, he's going to end up probably getting stopped in that rematch. And I think that will probably be a goal for Devin Haney so he can send a message to the light uh, weight division. Listen, it's not just about boxing skills. I will hurt you. Right. And that's my opinion on that. So shout out to Better Beef. Shout out to Joe Smith Jr. Like I said, I got any, I got more respect. I got respect for any man that steps into a boxing ring. They're doing something that I can't do, so I'm not gonna sit here and break them down. But my final question is, who do you guys think wins, Arthur Better Beef or Dimitri Bivol? Because I don't think that fight is just so easy to call. I know it's easy to fall into the trance of Arthur Better Be because he's 18 wins, 18 knockouts, the only 100% knockout rate we have in boxing right now. And Dimitri Bivol is also undefeated. And I just, you know, I just don't feel like he's going to allow Better Be to hit him more than one time. You know, it's it, like Better Be is going to have to really hurt him with a punch. Right. But I don't see uh, Bivol walking into any shots. Right. Because he's more of an athletic boxer. But anyway, I'm locked in. That was another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you agree or you don't agree. 
Either way, all you got to do is love boxing. I respect your opinion. As long as you keep it respectful, I'm out. Peace. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.